Do you have a home with unpermitted additions or unpermitted remodels and you're concerned if it can sell on the open market? Well, this is Sean Zangane bringing you tips and tricks on how to win in the San Diego real estate market. One of the most common questions we get, especially on an older home or in a non-HOA type neighborhood, is the seller of the home will tell me about an addition or change they made in the house and they didn't get a permit for it. And they're concerned it might be an issue when it comes time to selling your home. And you might be scared because it could be something big or it could be something minor. And we wanted to kind of debunk some of these myths about what is acceptable on the open market in terms of permitting. And again, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a contractor, but I'm gonna tell you from practical experience of helping thousands of people buy and sell homes of what things you should be concerned about and what things you should not be necessarily concerned about. Um, so typically when people have an issue, like an actual non-permitted issue, it'll usually have a citation by the city, it'll be red flag, there'll be notices of abatement, or there'll be something on title, maybe a lien, that there must be some issue remedied. Now, if you have that on your property, that is definitely going to make an issue for you to be able to sell the property. Whether it be something minor, I've seen people, uh, especially people who move tons of dirt or add on to the back of their house and do like a bootleg add on. Yeah, those things will probably be re red flags for people if the city already knows about it because it usually means that it either wasn't done to code or looking to code, uh, and it's causing some sort of nuisance to the neighborhood. And that's gonna be a real important thing that we wanna address and work through. Um, and then the next thing is like what we'll see, uh, the most common thing is if you really look down to it, every single remodel, whether it be a simple bathroom, a kitchen, uh, if you even replace your roof, all these things need permits. But I will tell you, in all the homes that I've visited, I would say a very, very small portion of them actually getting all this stuff permitted, everything that should be permitted. And this is kind of practical for the day and age that we live in. A lot of times people don't get all the permits necessary. Where it really hits you, if you do something structural or add on to the home, those are the things that are really gonna be issues for the buyer community today. So how does it affect value? Well, it kind of depends on the quality of the work. Uh, if it looks like you know a couple buddies on a Saturday after drinking a couple beers went and tiled a bathroom, yeah, that's gonna probably be an issue because you're gonna have uneven grout lines, you're gonna have things that aren't level and it's not gonna look right. If you have things that look like a contractor did it, most people aren't gonna ask a question and they're not gonna bring it up. The most important thing you can do as a seller is just notify the buyer that a changes were made to the home and permits are unknown or you don't have them. Uh, so that the buyer can do their own research when they bring their contractors and inspectors in to see if it fits exactly what they're looking for. Now, if you have something structural, I highly recommend being very clear about it of what you did with the buyer and showing them that it was something either very simple or very complicated because those things you might need to go back and retroactively permit. Um, and the nice thing is that you can actually do that. Let's say you did something and you're like, hey, I just want to make sure I get this permitted. We actually work with contractors and vendors, uh, actually specialty people who will go back and post retrofit something that has been done without a permit to get it to qualify with the city's recommendation for permit. Typically, we always hear of people getting the permit first, but sometimes things aren't perfect. We have vendors that actually specialize in that specifically to make sure that's easy for you guys. Now, if you did add square footage, this could be a major, major addition in value to a home. A lot of times we'll see homes where they maybe enclosed a patio cover or something like that, where the whole entire structure is structurally sound and it added a couple hundred square feet. Well, in areas like North Park or by the coastal cities where we're talking could be upwards of $1,000 a foot, that could be an, a significant amount of value added to a home. Now, does it all get counted at the same rate as the original structure? Not necessarily in every occasion. Uh, we do find a lot of times that an appraiser who will go out and appraise the property will actually give that section of the home a little less value, even if it's in perfect condition compared to the overall square footage of the home. And that's something you need to be aware of as you put her, your home for sale. For example, if you had a thousand square foot home and you added 200 square feet illegally or converted a garage or something like that, I would expect that you're gonna get the main value for the thousand square foot of home and then a reduced value as long as the 200 additional square foot look nice and neat. So if you guys are looking for consultants to help you kind of assess or you're looking to start a project and you're like, oh, I don't think I need permits, 
talk to a permit expert. We have some great recommendations that we can link you up with, and I will tell you, it will save you tens of thousands of dollars and tons of headache. If you're looking for more tips and tricks on how to win in San Diego real estate market, make sure to reach out to us today. Have a great day.